Hi there, and welcome to My Catholic Perspective. I am Allie Marie, a born and raised Michigander and super amateur athlete. I grew up playing the piano, so I wasn't allowed to play sports so I was way older because my parents were afraid I was going to break a finger. That said, even though I am not very good at sports, I can still respect and see when somebody is. And uh, Kobe Bryant is somebody who lived his life in the spotlight. He was a very well-known household name. And as many of you know, as I'm sure everybody has probably heard by now, he passed away this last Sunday in a tragic helicopter accident where there were nine people aboard. Um, he passed away with his daughter, Gigi, Gianna. And, uh, and it's just a really sad thing. A lot of people are talking about him and some people are upset that other people aren't being mentioned as much as he is. Um, but at the end of the day, Kobe Bryant is household name. Like it, if it had been like, I, I've been thinking locally, it's like how many families lose their dad? Like people die every day, every minute. And so when like this, I, this crash is publicized because of who Kobe was. It's not something that we probably would have even heard about in Michigan had he not been on board. So that said, we there's some like naysayers out there that are saying that Kobe was a terrible Catholic because it's known that Kobe was a practicing Catholic. It's now come to light. He was at mass that morning. He has like he he has attributed his Catholic faith to so much in getting him through dark times. And so I want to talk about the possibility of his sainthood. Um, there are like around here on this channel, I like to talk about different things that the Catholic Church teaches and clarify some of those, and also how it con compares and. Contrast to our Protestant or other Christian counterparts. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe. I'm here every Thursday at 3 p.m. So as far as sainthood in general goes, uh, recently somebody had commented saying that they didn't believe that the Catholic Church had the right to have these man-made saints. Man-made saints. And, um, and we don't have man-made saints in the Catholic Church. We have man recognized saints. So we can look at somebody's life and there is an extreme process that goes through it. They have to be dead for at least five years before the canonization process can even begin. Everything that they've ever written, everything they've ever said is like scrupulously examined. They look at their life, what they contributed. They There have to be two miracles attributed to their intercession, which is them like praying for someone else, kind of like you'd ask me to pray for you. And, um, and so there, there's a lot that goes into that. The only person, like in the Christian community as a whole, the only person that we know 100% is in heaven is the thief on the cross, who at the last moment of his life said, Jesus, I, I believe, like, and, and Jesus told him, like, I, I will, I tell you, I, today I will see you in paradise. Today you will be in paradise with me. And so that is the one person that we can say without a shadow of a doubt is in heaven. Okay. So... In the Christian community, so a saint in the Catholic tradition is essentially somebody who has found their level of purification that brings them to the point that they can go directly in front of God. They, you know, we believe in purgatory. I have a whole different video on that. But they basically skip purgatory and go straight to heaven. So in the in the Christian tradition where purgatory is not a concept or a belief, um, there are a lot of people, like in the once saved, always saved mindset and that philosophy, everybody would be a saint that had asked Jesus into their life or that had been baptized or whatever your doctrine states as that once saved, always saved. And, um, and so technically you could call a lot of people saints if that's, you know, what the, the Protestant belief would be because sainthood just means you are in heaven. You are unified with God, which gives you like this whole different experience of our journey of life, of our eternal life that we're currently living. Um, it, it, it changes that. Um, and in the Catholic belief, saints can intercede for us. They can take our prayers and pray for us, just like we pray for each other. Um, but they maybe carry a little bit more weight than we do because they're already unified with God, because they've reached that perfection state where they, they can be with God. So, so Kobe Bryant lived this life in the spotlight. Like cameras were all around. Um, you know, there was the allegation back in early 2000s that he had raped a 19 year old at a hotel. He denied it. He said it was consensual. He admitted that there was an affair. He'd been married for two years. Their first daughter, Natalia, had been born. Um, and he and his wife decided to stick it out. They stuck to that matrimony, to the sacrament of matrimony. They pushed through that. And that in and of itself is commendable. Two years later, Kobe Bryant came out and he issued a public apology. And he, he stated how he understood how that girl like didn't 
technically consent and how she didn't see it as consensual, but he thought that it was because he didn't like outright ask like, can we have sex now? Um, and so, but he thought it was consensual, but it happened to not be. And that is the case in some non-consent, like, and I have shared my rape story before. That's, that's how it was for me. The guy that had sex with me um, at that point he thought that I was consenting, but I wasn't. And so so there can be a genuine disconnect. And so that would be in a state of ignorance that we believe as Catholics that God has mercy on, that if we are truly unaware of something, that God would have mercy on that. We pray for that because we don't want to be held accountable for something that we literally had no awareness of. Like That's why in the Catholic faith, like, we trust that people from other religions can still make it to heaven because they might have never heard about Jesus and they might have never known any different and they didn't have any resources to learn. And so that, that aspect comes into play, the, the lack of knowledge. And, um, and so within that though, Kobe still ended up taking accountability and he accepted those consequences and he apologized for all of that, which is a huge sign of maturity both like emotionally and spiritually and to move forward with that. And then there was another one that I had read in the CN in a CNN article that said that he had called a referee like an effing faggot or something like, um, and, and he came out and he apologized about that too. So I want to shift gears onto somebody that we know is like super great, right? Mother Teresa. She worked in Calcutta and like she, she taught people in FP. She took care of the sick and the poor, the, the sick on the streets. So what if there was somebody over there that she unintentionally like touched inappropriately? What if she was mending to sores on a man's genitals that he actually didn't want her touching him? Okay, so if a camera had been there and there had been like resources for him to file a suit against this woman who he didn't want her help, he said no and she was just like, no, I'm going to help you. It's out of the goodness of my heart. Um, like... Would that totally ruin Mother Teresa's reputation when people be like, oh no, she like touched this person. I know it's not comparable to like the rape allegation and everything else, but I'm talking, like he apologized. Like there was a contrite heart there and that is the epitome of what Christianity is all about. It's about forgiveness. It's about being able to say sorry and then move on. Like God's grace washes us white as snow. Our past can be a lesson. It's not a prison sentence. So anything that we do that ends up being like a, to a detriment for another person is um like it can be forgiven, especially in God's eyes. Like that's the only eyes that it matters. I don't care if you've forgiven Kobe for whatever. And if you're sitting there saying, oh, well, you're asking him to pray for you. Well, pray for that teen he raped and whatever else. Like you can be as harsh as you want. But at the end of the day, God's judgment is the only one that matters. And he has shown so much that he is like this public, like he's been Catholic. And it's been in the background. There's been a silent humility to his faith that has been going on. I mean, he has this family foundation that is helping the young and the sick, and or not the sick, the young and the poor, and those families in need. And, and, and so to to negate these pieces that are in the background because this other aspect of him was the spotlight of his life is to erase a huge part of his character. Um, I mean, going into the detriment to another, uh, Meg Hunter Kilmer, uh, she has piercedhands.com. She's a hobo for Christ. Uh, she had written a really powerful reflection on the woman who had wiped Christ's face when he was walking with a cross. I, I don't know why I can't remember the saint's name right now. But anyway, but, but she had said, what if she, in her attempt to help Christ, pushed those push the crown further into his forehead. What if she like pushed the dirt into his face and actually hurt him as she attempted to offer this thing, but she still regarded as a saint. She's still upheld to this like level of somebody who tried to help even if she had accidentally hurt Christ. And so there are a lot of situations in where we cannot be the judge. Like motives and intentions matter and like Obviously, in, in some of the really big aspects of Kobe's life where he did fall short, like very publicly, he also very publicly 
came forward and apologized. I, I talk, I've been talking about this for a few weeks. Like if something public negative happens, it deserves a public response. We can't just sweep it away and act like it's never gonna happen. And, and I mean, it's not authentic. It's not um, anything about who Christ is as a person. It's not about what Catholicism is as a religion. Um, and so there's, there's a lot there, but the possibility of Kobe being a saint is, I mean, it's there. He was a strong Catholic. He was at mass hours before he died. And um, and it just, it blows my mind that people want to say, well, we can't judge who is in heaven or is not in heaven. But then you want to say who's not in heaven when we're saying, well, he could be. Like, only God knows his heart and his true, like, uh, he was generous enough to give all these people a ride to this game, you know. And, uh, and I don't know. And... Sure, he didn't save thousands of people from the Holocaust. He didn't have, you know, teach all these people NFP in the streets of Calcutta. He he didn't do, like, all these great, grandiose things that are known right now. But how much is going to come to light over the next five years of what his foundation is doing? About the legacy that he's leaving, that he's known as a great father and a great husband and somebody who's constantly striving. He was in a constant state of conversion and he was open to that. He was open to the fact that, yeah, I'm going to make mistakes. And he was in the spotlight. And so he knew that he had to publicly apologize about this stuff. And, and I mean, we all screw up. We all do. It just, it happens. It's part of the human nature. But we have to be willing with ourselves and with others to accept apologies, to offer forgiveness, even if we don't receive an apology, and move forward with life and accept that God's grace is bigger than anything that we could ever say or do. Like only God's grace can change hearts. Only God's grace can intervene in relationships and, and, and in our spiritual life. It's, it's all that's there. So those are my thoughts for today. I really, you know, I was sad when, when uh, Kobe had passed, I saw the article and it had been posted about an hour ago. I texted my husband and said, hey, did you see this? And he said, yeah. And I talked to him, I was like, why didn't you tell me? He said, oh, I didn't think you'd care. I didn't know you were into basketball. And I said, any major current event like this, I definitely care about. So yes, please like, let me know if you see something like that. <laughs> because it's kind of a big deal. And so um, whether you know, you're know you a basketball player or not, uh, whenever a household name dies like this tragically, it's a national tragedy. Like it, It's a part of our identity as America. I mean, he was a star of the NBA, one of the best basketball players to ever live. And, you know, I may not be a basketball fan, but I'm a people fan, you know, and I'm a fan of people who are Catholic and not Catholic and just people who are trying to be better, people who are trying to be witnesses in this life. And Colby was definitely one of those people. And even though his Catholic faith may not have been the epitome of what had him in the headlines, unlike some of our other saints, it does not mean that his Catholic faith had a huge impact in what he was doing behind the scenes and what influenced him to be able to get to where he did in his professional career. That's all I have for today. So I pray that God is able to grant you the resources that you need to draw closer to him and to those around you. I hope you're able to make it a great day, and I'll see you in the comments. Take care.